Uh, we are all very tired, so let's try to give a bit of energy. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next 15 minutes is uh, to present you uh, some of the papers which have been uh, published on intensive care medicine regarding ecography and hemodynamics. Uh, I had to choose between uh, uh, presenting you so, so, so many and, and without going to details or presenting you just few going to details. I'm a sort of in the middle. So then if you have questions, we can go more in the details later. So this year we had really a huge amount of papers regarding HECO and hemodynamics uh, in uh, ICM because I think it is one of the very hot uh, topic that we have. Everybody like uh, HECO and uh, ultrasound and uh, hemodynamics. We have consensus, we have original research, uh, there are some very interesting sections uh, in the journal which are understanding the disease and the images which we have uh, a tons of images that have been sent to the journal. Um, I really recommend you to, to read this paper. These are clinical practice guidelines. These are guidelines uh, uh, regarding the intravenous maintenance fluid therapy in acute and critically ill uh, children, and it was done by a multidisciplinary expert group within the ESPNIC. And uh, you probably know how these uh, consensus are built generally, but they have to fit with uh, a very strong uh, and strict methodology. First of all, there is a systematic review, so there is the PICO construction. In this case, the authors uh, constituted five PICOs, one about the indication to fluid administration, two on tonicity, three on the use of balance and solution, four composition, and five the amounts of the fluids. The systematic review was done using five databases and uh, the risk of bias was then assessed. And then after these statements were produced and were uh, accepted or not uh, by the panel through a modified Delphi process and online rounds of votation. So it's a complicated process, but at the end it uh, is able to provide evidence and also expert opinion. And if you look at this paper, 56 papers at the end met the inclusion criteria and 16 recommendations were produced. Of course, we don't have the time to go in the details about all of them. We had uh, two statements for the PICO-1, one statement for the two, three for the, for the, for the PICO-3, five for the PICO-4, and uh, uh, five for the PICO-5. And uh, these are the, um, uh, the key messages of, uh, of the consensus and, and of the findings from uh, this paper. Regarding, regarding the PICO-1, as I mentioned, the, the, the question was the indication. So does intravenous maintenance fluid therapy versus other hydration therapies can impact on clinical outcome? And the answer was that we still don't have significant difference in length of stay, but there is a trend in reduction of uh, length of hospital stay in patient receiving enteral fluids. Regarding PICO2 on the tonicity, the question was, does isotonic solution versus hypotonic uh, impact on clinical outcome? And the answer was yes. So enough evidence and uh, uh, enough agreement among, uh, uh, among the experts. Isotonic solution significantly increase the risk of hyponatremia compared with hypotonic uh, fluids. PICO3 balanced versus non-balanced solution and here again good statements good conclusions length of stair or P PICU stay were slightly but significantly decreased in the children receiving balanced uh, uh, solutions not able to respond to PICO4 because of the lack of, uh, of uh, evidence and regarding the amounts restrictive strategies was associated with lower change in plasma sodium so these were the key messages we also have uh, uh, randomized control trials. Um, this is a very nice study, uh, which basically explored in uh, more than 200 patients with septic shock with new onset arrhythmia, uh, and the authors compared the use of uh, propafenone versus amiodarone, and these are, this is the, the design of the study, and these are the outcomes of the study. The outcomes were the proportional patients who had the sinus rhythm 24 hours after the start of the infusion, time of restoration of the first sinus rhythm and the proportion of patients with a recurrent arrhythmia. So these are the main results regarding the supraventricular arrhythmia and basically after one day, 
72 versus 67 percent were in, uh, in sinus rhythm in the two groups. No difference. But the median time was 3.7 for propafenon and it was 7.3 for the uh, amiodarone. These are the surviving, uh, uh, these are the Kaplan-Meier uh, curve, as you, as you might know. Arrhythmia occurred in 50, nearly half of the patients with propafenon and in 76 percent of the patients who were treated with, uh, with amiodarone. So at the end, the conclusions of these studies that uh, propafenone compared to amiodarone for this kind of uh, patients who have a normal or moderately reduced left ventricular systolic function does not provide a better rate of control at 24 hours, uh, but propafenone can offer a far, faster cardioversion with less arrhythmia occurrence, especially in the subgroup of patients who do not have uh, a left uh, atrium dilated. And uh, still uh, in the field of the randomized control trial, I think that uh, this is a, a very interesting study. You know that uh, uh, nowadays we discuss a lot about uh, microcirculation. This is a, a randomized control trial which aimed to test the hypothesis that uh, sublingual mic microcirculatory perfusion variable through a, an automated tool would uh, influence uh, and treat in patients according to these uh, values would affect 30 days uh, uh, mortality in patients with uh, circulatory shock. And again, uh, this is uh, the design of, uh, of the study. Um, basically, the methods were the following. All the patients received a sublingual measurement of a microcirculation using a tool which is called the side stream dark field video, which non-invasively is able to assess below in the sublingual areas uh, microcirculation factors and patients were randomized to usual routine or in those who were treated integrating these parameters in the therapy plan. And uh, unfortunately, no difference uh, between the two groups was, uh, was fine in, the inter in terms of uh, uh, 30 days mortality. But in the interventional group, more patients received an adjustment or in both increase or not, or decrease in the use of uh, vasoactric drugs uh, and fluid. And this is the representation of a couple of Meyer regarding the mortality. You see there is not difference, but as you can see on your left side, there is some difference in the use of vasopressors and uh, fluids. And this, uh, this trial uh, created a bit of discussion in, uh, in the community. Uh, some authors raised the question whether we need uh, uh, automated or in Direct or uh, this type of uh, tools for the assessment of uh, circulation. We already have uh, some clinical tools which are already able to tell us how microcirculation is working, like capillary refill test, etc. So I encourage you to read uh, all the story through the editorials. This is another trial. I think that you all know the classic trial, which is a large randomized control trial, restrictive versus standard IV uh, therapy. And uh, this is a pre-planned analysis for a long term because the classic trial assessed the outcomes at 90 days. And in this study, basically, the follow-up was uh, until one year. So if you remember, the classic trial was a negative trial in terms of uh, outcome. And uh, this is uh, just the prosecution of it. And uh, as you can see here, different outcomes were assessed. Mortality, of course, but also all the neurocognitive uh, function of, uh, of the patients. So mini mental test, anxiety, depression, pain, discomfort, all more precise uh, factors to assess the quality of life. And the results uh, were again negative. So no difference at uh, one year regarding the, um, the out outcomes that were, that were explored. Observational study. This is a very nice uh, observational study from the EcoCovid group, uh, who basically did the serial echocardiographic uh, assessment in patients uh, with uh, COVID-19, and basically they evaluated the different phenotypes of right ventricular involvement uh, with uh, mortality. I think that the graphs of this paper are really, really nice. The key messages are basically that the majority of patients uh, with uh, COVID-19 
had the right ventricular failure with different characteristics, different phenotypes, and the involvement of the right ventricle intended to increase during the, during the ICU stay in patients with severe, uh, severe ARDS. And the ma major issue in terms of relationship with uh, outcome was for sure the acute uh, core pulmonary, uh, acute core pulmonary, which was importantly associated with, uh, with the outcome. And this is uh, uh, the last study, and then I'll just show you some, some images. Um, this is uh, something that we do every day in our ICU, so inserting CVC, and basically what the authors did here was to evaluate the occurrence of catheter-related thrombosis after and uh, before and uh, during and after the insertion of the central line. O total occurrence uh, around 17% of thrombosis of uh, central lines, and uh, the majority of these were also in the very early phases of uh, uh, of the ICU or immediately after the, the insertion of a uh, of, uh, central catheter. Half of these thrombosis were not that big, but one third were even larger than uh, seven millimeters. Most of, the, of these were not progressive and were resolved by, C, by, by CVC removal, but be careful because it's something that is really, really uh, common and possibly can create uh, a lot of complications. And then, as I was mentioning, I just uh, run very quickly to show that uh, we have here Julie Helms, who is uh, one of the uh, responsible of the journal for the images. And I think that this is a very nice uh, section because uh, we present uh, case report, but especially unique, didactical, and uh, new images. For example, this is an uh, hydropneum pericardium, which is something very uncommon. This is uh, a case uh, of uh, um, pericardial effusion after device closure of a PFO, which was uh, displaced. And don't forget other section of the journal, which can be useful in your daily practice when uh, you have patients with uh, not uh, very common pathologies and you have to keep in mind what to do. This is an understanding of the disease of myocarditis. Um, there is a lot of interest regarding the different phenotypes of uh, right ventricular injury after ARDS with very nice uh, algorithm for uh, the assessment and for the treatment of these patients. And uh, this is a very nice understanding the disease uh, on the pathophysiological changes uh, in the hemodynamic status uh, in uh, patients uh, before and after prone position. And finally, Adrian Wong here in a recent advance in ICU, look a bit forward and uh, will tell us in this, uh, in this small paper what is gonna happen according to him in the echographic assessment of the patients in the next, in the next 30 years. I hope he, he will be right because uh, he wrote a very nice uh, piece. I thank you for your attention and uh, uh, this is my daughter. She reads uh, ICM uh, every day. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chiara, for this very nice presentation. Are there any questions from the audience? I have one question, Chiara. You um, talked about um, the, t the study from WHO uh, in China about catheter-related thrombosis. Would you recommend anticoagulation for these patients who have catheter-related thrombosis? Not routinely. So what we do is to monitor. The, the message, I think, is mainly to, mes to, to, to monitor. Uh, the diameter tends to remain constant uh, in our unit as long as uh, the clot doesn't completely occlude uh, the lumen of the vessel. Obviously, it depends by the type of uh, patients, but as you know, we are all brain injured patients, so with the anticoagulation, <laughs> we are really a bit, uh, a bit scared. But if uh, uh, the thrombus occludes all the jugular uh, part, we uh, use uh, absolutely anticoagulation also because the outflow uh, in the jugular vein for brain injuries patient is very important, so it needs to be preserved. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Thank you, Chiara. Thank you. <laughs>